Hi guys, and welcome back to another Swiftly tutorial. Let's have a look today at another simple but powerful technique that will save you heapfuls of time, and it's going to be great. I'm sure you experts have a technical name for this, but I'm just going to call this tutorial Reusable Elements, and it does exactly what you may think. It reuses elements. So, let's have a look at my sample application that I've done right here called Reusable Keyboard. At the moment, I've simply created a project which contains absolutely nothing. Apart from it isn't nothing, because I've added a view controller, colored it, and added a push segue. So when I run it, this is what it looks like. Click the next page, it presents it, click left, and go back. So pretty much as good as nothing. So, what we want to do here is create a keyboard that we can reuse. And then what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate it by putting it on two separate pages and see how one block of code can be reused so you don't have to keep rewriting the same thing. So let's start by moving up and creating a new folder. We'll call this our keyboard right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Coco file in here. So we right click and click new file. We make sure we're in Coco Touch class and we make sure this is a subclass of UIV. And then we'll give our file a name. So we'll call this keyboard view. Finally, we click next and finish. So here's our keyboard view. So essentially this is where we're going to do all our creation and codes for the actual technical aspect of making the keyboard work. Visually, we're going to use a nib file. So again, we're going to right click, new file, we're going to now navigate to user interface, view, and we'll give this a similar name, keyboard view. So now we have two files. This is where we're going to do implementation, and this is where we're going to connect and do our visualization. So, let's start with the aesthetic of our keyboard. Well, to keep it simple, I'm going to create a custom size keyboard. So up here, under my properties, I'm going to change the size to free from. These dots will appear on all corners. And from here, I can simply drag to the size I want. So let's choose this size, like so. Now, I'm going to click and drag some buttons in, like so. And quick tip for you, if you hold down control and drag, sorry, if you hold down option and drag, you'll get an exact duplicate of the elements you've just created. So what I can do is I can highlight these two, like so, hold down option, and I get two lots of them. I highlight four, hold down option, I get four lots of them. So very useful if you're trying to copy the same thing. We're going to lastly change these numbers. Oop. Let me, come on. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is the most useless and obscene keyboard that you'll ever see in your entire life. Awesome. So now we've done that. We're going to move to our Swift file, and we're going to do some implementation. So, firstly, what we're going to want to do is initialize or essentially connect our nib file to our view so it knows to associate it. So, for what we're going to do is we're going to go to our keyboard view, 
file zona, and it's very important you click on file zona. We'll look at our custom class, and we'll click, type in keyboard view. What we're now going to do is we're going to create a link, an object of this nib file inside our keyboard view class. So to do that, we're going to navigate to our assistant editor so we can see both classes. So now we're in our assistant editor. We're now going to click on our view. And to create the object in a class, we simply just like when we hook up an IB action or outlet, we drop into our class, we give it a potential name and tap connect. As you can see, we now have a connection to our keyboard view and as you can see it highlights over here. So we know we've got it connected to the correct version. So we build that just to make sure there's no problems and there shouldn't be. And that's all good. Let's go back to our single editor, single view editor. We'll click on our keyboard view. Now, for the time being, we're not going to use this method. If you want to perform custom drawing, for example, you wanted to draw uh, objects on the fly on your keyboard, then this would be useful. However, having this appear, as it says in the comments around here, it will affect performance if you're not using it. So we're not going to use this for now, and we'll discuss that maybe in another video. So, the next thing we're going to implement, and this is for Swift, we're going to implement our decoder method. So as you can see here, if I put in uh, coder, sorry, if I put in our coder method here, this is responsible for unarchiving our view, our view in which case being our nib file here. So in order to get this to associate with this class here, we need to unarchive it. So as you can see, if we start typing uh, in it, Decoder, decoder, put in a decoder. We're now going to load our interface file here. So, simply to do that in Swift, we type ns bundle, not in that, <laughs> ns bundle main bundle and load nib named. So enter that and you've got auto fill it out for us. We're now going to want to type in the name of our file here. So in this case it's our keyboard view. It's important that's spelled correctly otherwise it won't work. The only of the object is going to be this class so it's our self and we're not going to pass any more options for the time being. Now we're going to need to add this to our subview. So self add subview. I'm going to add our view, which of course associates to our object in our nib. So uh, self dot view. So now when this class runs it will unarchive the view automatically when this method is called and it will load it from our nib keyboard view okay then now to see if this has worked we're going to navigate back to our main storyboard and here we're going to implement our keyboard or reusable keyboard. So our keyboard is going to appear inside a view just to make it clear. I should do that. And we're going to give this 
UI view, a class responsible for handling what to do with it. In this case, we want keyboard view. So type in keyboard view. Now when we type run, we should see the elements of our keyboard appear here. So now, of course, we can move this around and depending where we move it, it reflects because, of course, it's been generated within our view. So it should be lower now, like so. Now, of course, if we copy and paste this, we've got no extra code, but we've got our view, our keyboard in two places. So that should be a start. In the next tutorial, or the next part of the tutorial, we're going to look at uh, potentially making this keyboard more interactive, more, more keyboard-esque, and maybe then looking to return the input of our keyboard onto our actual view controller and doing something with it. So for example, uh, we could create a numeric keyboard um, that emulates the style of the pin code app, uh, pin code lock screen that you find when you unlock your device. So if you're interested in that, then uh, click on the link that's on your screen now. And um, other tutorials will be coming from the power of my voice. If you want to see other videos on my channel, then just click below. Um, drop me a like and subscribe if uh, you, this helped you in any way and um, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day and I'll see you in the next part. Have any questions? Leave me a comment and I'll get back to you.